I seem to be dropping something. Oh no! We were just talking. Oh, I must go. The, the food, dinner. Uh, do, do the spinach. I'll come and give you a hand. No, you won't. Giles. Tina chatters aren't very healthy things at present. You keep out of the kitchen and you keep away from my wife. Really? Look here. You keep away from my wife, friend. She's not going to be the next victim. Oh, so that's what you think about me. Or you said so, haven't I? There's a killer loose in this house, and it seems to me that you fit the bill. I'm not the only one to fit the bill. And let's see who else does. How blind you are. Or do you just pretend to be blind? I tell you, I'm looking out for my wife's safety. Well, so am I. I'm not going to leave you here alone with her. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Please go, Christopher. <clears throat> I'm not going. Please go, Chris. I mean it. I shan't be far away. <laughs> what is all this, Molly? You must be crazy. Perfectly prepared to shut yourself up in the kitchen with that homicidal maniac. He isn't. You've only got to look at him to see he's balmy. He isn't. He's just unhappy, I tell you, Giles. He isn't dangerous. And anyway, I would know if he were dangerous. I can look after myself. That's what Mrs. Boyle said. But Giles, don't. Look here. What is there between you and that wretched boy? What do you mean by between us? I'm sorry for him, that's all. Perhaps you've met him before. Perhaps you suggested him to come in and meet, both pretend to meet for the first time. Giles, have you gone out of your mind? How dare you suggest these things? Rather odd that he should come and stay in an out-of-the-way place like this. No, odder than this case, well, and Major Metcalf and Mrs. Boyle should. I've read once in a paper that these homicidal cases were able to attract women. Looks as though it were true. How long has this been going on? Which first knowing? You're being absolutely ridiculous. I never set eyes on Christopher Rowe until he arrived yesterday. That's what you say. Perhaps you've been going up to London to meet him on the sly. You haven't been out to London for weeks. Is that so? What on earth do you mean? It's quite true. Really? And what's this? <gasps> this is one of the gloves you're wearing yesterday. You dropped it on the couch. Picked it up this afternoon when I was talking to Sergeant Trotter. You see what's inside it? A London bus ticket. Oh, that. So it seems you not only went to the village yesterday, you went to London as well. All right. I went to London. Whilst I was safely away racing around the countryside. Whilst you were racing around the countryside? Come on now, admit it. You went to London. All right. So did you. What? So did you. You brought back an evening paper. Where did you get hold of that? It was in your overcoat pocket. Anyone could have put it in there. Did they? No. You were in London. All right. Yes. I was in London. At least I didn't go to meet a woman there. Didn't you? <laughs> Are you sure you didn't? What's the matter? Go away. Don't come near me. Did you go to London yesterday to be Christopher Wren? Don't, don't touch me. Don't be a fool. Of course I didn't. Then why did you go? Molly, you're different all of a sudden. It feels like I don't know you anymore. Perhaps you never did know me. We've been married how long? A year? You don't know anything about me, what I'd done or thought or felt or suffered before you knew me. Molly, you've gone crazy. All right, I'm crazy! Why not? Perhaps it's fun to be crazy! What the hell do you think you're trying now, to prove? Now, I do hope you young people aren't saying a little more than you mean. <laughs> One is so up to when his love is born. Love is cross. That's good. Quite so, quite so. I have been through all this myself when I was a younger man. Jeunesse. Jeunesse, as the poet says. Not been married long, I imagine. It's no business of yours, Mr. Farrachini. Oh, no, no. No business at all. But I just came in to say that the sergeant cannot find his keys and I'm afraid he's very annoyed. Christopher! What? <sighs> Mr. Alston! Mrs. Rawson, have you removed my skis from the cupboard where we put them? Of course not. Somebody's taken them. What made you happen to look for them? The snow is still lying. I need help here. Reinforcements. I was going to ski over to the police station at Market Hampton to report on the situation. And now you can't. Dear, dear. Somebody certainly seemed 